Hello and welcome to The Game Plan, where we bring you in-depth analysis of the greatest game of all you won't find anywhere else. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Anthony Seabold. Now, Seabes, since Magic Round in Round 10, we've seen sim bins as part of the NRL crackdown on foul play and head highs. How hard is that to adapt to on the run for teams out there in the middle? Yeah, it's quite disruptive to have a, uh, you know, a number go off the field. And I think teams will be starting to practice out of training with their game scenarios. And, and um, it is a skill. You know, it's an art to play with 12 players both, uh, on both sides of the football. So... Um, I think you'll see more and more teams have to adapt to it. And as I said before, they'll, they'll do that at training. All right, we saw a couple of games impacted by sin bins over the weekend in round 14. Let's start with the Titans-Roosters match. Firstly, from a defensive perspective and how the Roosters dealt with it. Yeah, OK, so one of the things you'll talk to your fullback about is, is plugging in the line. We've spoken about that um, you know, in a couple of episodes this year. So most fullbacks will defend in the front line uh, when they're defending their goal line. And you'll see it more and more when teams are down to 12 defenders, the fullback will actually stay in the line pretty much for the whole set. So, again, on the weekend, one of the things I saw was uh, Joseph Marna, who was uh, playing fullback for the Roosters against the Gold Coast Titans. He was plugging in the line. So you'll see him there at a defender on the left-hand side for the Roosters. And, and he'll spend that whole tackle in the line there. You'll see him there. I think that's Fogarty in the number seven for the Titans who passes a short ball. Um, Marnie stayed in the line to give them that extra defensive number because they had uh, their, their hooker in the, in the sim bin. So, again, as it plays through... One of the things that Joseph Manu could have done a little bit better, he, he did a good job there, but one of the things he could have done better on the next play is actually be an A defender on the long side. So what you'll see here is there's only one attacking player for the Gold Coast Titans and there's actually four defenders all on the short side there for the Roosters. So one of the things that is difficult for a fullback is organising the defensive line with their numbers and their splits when you go down to 12 men. So if you're Joey Manu in this exact play, do you want him just to be standing wider or get one of these guys on the short side pushing over? Yeah, well, there's Joseph Manu there as a fullback. He's on a short side there. So what I'd like to see from Joseph Manu, just to thicken up the long side, you'd like to see him plugging as an A defender on the long side rather than the short side when they go down to 12 men. So he's also normally playing the centres, not necessarily a fullback. Yeah. So will that impact this scenario as well? He might not be used to being in this scenario. As you said, Ben Marsh, he's off for 10 in the... Yeah, in the so, so most of... Um, you know, he, he's an outstanding player, as we know. And he can play... Uh, in the halves, he can play uh, at fullback, but his position that he's done most of his reps at training uh, is at centre. So again, this is be you know, brand new to Joseph Manu, but he's a very good player, and he would have picked up on this. There's no doubt about that. And the Roosters were leading by what 24 points. Yeah, at this yeah, it stage. was. You know, so was... they were well in control of this match. Yeah. But if you play this clip through. As a result of having too many men on that side, it leaves yeah. the Roosters vulnerable on their right edge. Yeah, so they're down a number or two by Joseph Manu plugging on the short side. Now, against a Roosters team that is very structured defensively, they're very good in defence. There's an offload by Jared Wallace there to Tyrone Peachy uh, and they go over and score. So I'm sure the Gold Coast Titans would have gone in with a game plan to break up the structured defence of the Roosters by sided offload. So you see it there. So regardless of whether the Roosters had 13 men or 12 men in that particular instance, Gold Coast would have come in with a plan to try and have some sided offloads just to break up the defence in any case. So that first tackle there, great example of Joey Manu in the line. The second yeah. example they could have done better. Yes. Let's look at it from an attacking perspective, what the Titans did to make the uh, the Roosters vulnerable again. Okay, so one of the, the, the things that um, teams often will get in the tendency of doing is when there's a, a defender down uh, in the opposition team, they want to try and go from side to side because they think we're going to get an overlap here. But in actual fact, the most effective way and most efficient way to attack against 12 defenders is by playing from shorter field position because then the fullback actually has to, to, um, to be really accurate with his line organisation. So in this particular instance here, you'll see that there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six Roosters defenders pretty much on the left-hand side of the uh, of the field. So there's only six defenders, um, you know, marking the long side. And, and as it plays through, what happens is there's Joseph Manu in the line here. He's defending as, as an A defender, as we said, on the open side. So I'm sure that message would have gone down from Trent Robinson. Um, but as they play through, they stress the line by not trying to go sideways, but by playing through the Roosters there. So you'll see a short ball to Brian Kelly inside uh, Joseph Sawali's um, sh shoulder there. And as I said before, um, you want to play from shorter field position. And, and, and what it does, it stresses the, the fullback with his defensive splits. So it's not necessarily going from sideline to sideline, but it's starting, as we spoke about a couple of weeks ago here on the game plan, teams will get to a certain position on the yeah. field, whether it's to the left post or the right post, yeah. and that's where they want to attack from. Yeah, so then the fullback has to organise his defence. Does he leave five defenders on the short side? Does he leave four defenders on the short side? How many defenders does he get on the long side? And as you can see, by the Titans playing from a little bit shorter field position and going through 
going through the roosters rather than trying to go from side to side. That's had the most um, impact on the weekend when they scored three tries. And that's the key, isn't it? It's not necessarily going, hey, get it to your winger and let yeah. him do all the work and go on the outside. Yeah. It's about getting and creating that space in the defensive unit and just finding on the run where that hole is. Is that right? It, it is. It's, it's making the fullback have to make a decision. Is he going to put six defenders on the long side? Is he going to put seven defenders on the long side? How many is he going to put on the short side? Will he lock down his short side first? What will he do? So it's really difficult for a fullback and um, the, the fullback is the captain of your defence. So when it um, when, when teams go down to 12 defenders, it's a really challenging role. But um, as, a, as I said, you want to play from shorter field position from an attacking perspective. What's a trend you've been seeing in recent weeks and especially over the weekend when teams are attacking from further out? Not necessarily on a goal line because we've yeah. spoken about in, in recent weeks that when a team is attacking a goal line or when a team's defending their goal line, it's easy to plug the line with the yes. fullback. Yeah. I'm guessing they can't do that when it's... No, they can't the do that when, you know, when they're 60 or 70 metres from, um, you know, from their own trial line. So one of the things I've seen is this. So teams will get... The four in defender, so that's normally an edge back rower um, involved in the tackle. So I'll give you an example from Saturday's game, Titans versus Roosters. So Angus Crichton here, he's the four in defender. He's the left hand side edge back rower for the Roosters. Very good defensive player, and they get him involved in the tackle here. So there he is in the tackle, and what Gold Coast Titans will do now is they'll get on the keep going. What um, coaches will a call, you know, playing up the short side. So you'll see here there's a halfback, there's a centre and there's a winger. So there's only three defenders on the keep going. So get the four men in the tackle and you'll create momentum by going up the keep going side or up the short side. And you'll see Fogarty there coming back through the middle of the park. But um, that's where I see the, the, the biggest trend in the game. Teams attacking against 12 defenders, playing from short field position and getting the four in defender involved in the tackle. So there we saw Angus Crichton on the back foot. Is the key in that play getting to him fast and getting a quick play of the ball so yeah. you have that momentum? Yeah, you want crap momentum there. So you get him, get down, play the ball, and then you get on the up. And, um, and and that's what good halves and good teams will do. They'll get the four men involved in the tackle and get on the keep going side. Because as you saw there, there's only three defenders on the keep going. So it's easy to make metres, momentum, um, and even cause some line breaks as well. But the biggest thing you'll get is you'll get momentum. In the main game on Sunday as well, the West Tigers against the Parramatta Eels. Both teams were affected at times uh, through sin bidding. Uh, let's see how the West Tigers were affected when Sean Bloor was in the sin bin. Yes, so the trend continued, Jack. So again, I was paying particular attention to what teams are doing. And um, you'll see in this particular instance, so there's Leilua, the uh, number 12 there for the West Tigers. He's the edge back rower. So he's the right edge back rower for the West Tigers team. They get him involved in the tackle here. So the number 12 there, that's who you're looking at. And what Parramatta will do is they'll get on the keep going side here. So he's again the four in defender. Yes. So he, he was sucked well in field then. He was, yeah. Again, they're defending with 12 men. So what happens is they get the four men involved in the tackle and, and Leilua has to try and win that tackle and try and slow momentum down. But what you'll see is this. You'll see that there's only one, two, three, four, five defenders on the keep going side. So normally from that field position there, teams would have six defenders when they've got 13 men. So again, you get Leilua involved in the tackle and Parramatta get on the keep going side and they create momentum. And you'll see that here. Again, it's not about trying to pass their way out of trouble. Mitchell Moses there, show and go, finds... Um, you know, a, a, an opportunity there to, to run himself and score in the corner, but playing through them. But they get the four men involved in the tackle and they get on the keep going side. And we spoke earlier this year on the game plan, if you missed the episode, about eyes up footy. Is that where the, yeah. those playmakers have to use that vision and, and see where the gaps are opening up in front of them and not be like, let's just get the ball to Michael Sivo and let him do it. Let's see, you know, does a gap open up in front of me? Does it open up in front of our centre? Does it open up inside for Clint Gutherson to go through? Yeah, so you see there, Mitchell Mose actually shows and goes because what defenders are thinking, oh, we're only down, you know, we've got 12 defenders, we're down a man, and they'll try and push you to the sideline. So they're working really hard, um, you know, on the keep going. So a show and go or a short pass inside shoulder like Joseph Sawali when he let the, um, you know, the attacking player for the Titans and Brian Kelly through on a try, you know, they're thinking, oh, we've got to help out here, we've got to help out here. So show and go, short passes are the key, playing through teams when um, you're, you're attacking against 12 defenders. So just like the Gold Coast Titans, they wreaked havoc when the Roosters were down a man. The Eels had a lot of fun yeah. at a banquet stage where the West Tigers were down. Yeah, they did. They scored 18 points and it really um, was, you know, they were, they were in control. So I won't say it was, um, you know, a, a big, um, you know, call on the result, but um, they, they found 18 points while Sean Bloor was in the sim bin. And again, what their cue was this. So this time it's, it's Little defending as a four-in defender. So he's wearing the number nine jersey there. So four-in defender, there's um, Billy Walters as a three-in defender and Adam Dewey as the two in there at, at centre. So they get Little involved in the tackle. There's the number nine. 
and Parramatta will then go on the keep going side. So they get the four men involved in the tackle. And what you'll see there is there's actually one, two, three, four attacking players versus one, two, three defending players. So, again, really good um, eyes up football, as you, as you call it. Um, but that's, that's the cue. Um, play from shorter field position, uh, get the four men involved in the tackle, and you'll create momentum and you'll, you'll create opportunities in attack. And then they go down the, again, a, a different style of play. They've gone out the back to Mitch Moses there. And this time he finds his winger in Michael Sivo. So one time they went, he went straight through with show and go. Yeah. This time the back rower goes out the, the back to Mitch yeah. Moses. Yeah, yeah, probably either, you know, great ball playing skills, um, the number 11 for Parramatta. But again, you'll see Mitchell Moses, um, he's not trying to play wide straight away. He's actually playing through there with a show and go because... As I said before, what teams will do, they think they're a defender short and they'll try and work really hard from inside out. And it enables you to play short, as I said, or show and go. And, you know, very good, um, you know, skills there by Mitchell Moses to put Sivo in the corner. But, again, the tactic was play from shorter field position, get the four defender involved in the tackle and get on the keep going. OK, so naturally, if an attacking team has 13 players up against 12 defenders, it's going to be easier than attacking against 13 players. If your fullback can't plug in your line this far out yeah. from your goal line or your, your, the try line, how can a defensive unit stop these players from happening so far out? Yeah, so what teams have to do is it, you'll see um, Little get involved in the tackle here. So what, from a defensive perspective, the strategy would be to lock the keep going. So by that I mean Alex Twell here, who's the aid of friend on the, on the open side, he needs to relocate and travel to the short side. So coaches will call that flip. So we need to flip a defender because what you want to see is you want to see one, two, three, four defenders on a short side rather than just three defenders. And what happens then is it's, it becomes man on man. And you, can, and you can actually handle that, you know, that threat there on a keep going side from the Parramatta Reels. So you lock your keep going side and then you lock the front door, which is your A, B and C defenders on the open side. Now, if they want to try and play out here, Zach, they can play out here, but there's a number of passes, long passes, to have to try and find that space. So teams will want to play from shorter field position, so lock your keep going and then lock the, um, you know, the ruck spacings as well. So as you mentioned there, let's just break it down a little bit further. So Alex Twell comes to this side. That leaves yourself a man short. So why is it harder to defend this side, which is less space, than the long side? Because um, the threat is the short passes, OK? So you'll see Papalihi there. He gets down the keep going side. Mitchell Moses wants to try and um, you know, play on the up often as well. And the, the key is this here. So these three defenders, automatically there's, a, there's an overlap. You know, as I said before, there's one, two, three, four defenders there for... Uh, sorry, four attackers there for the Parramatta Eels. So it's hard to defend. It's easier to defend the wide open spaces because if they want to try and get the ball all the way out here to the Parramatta Eels um, winger, they have to pass two or three passes. There it's one pass. So they've got time on their side. That's what it comes down to. They've got time on their side rather than these defenders here being on the back foot already, not knowing where it's going to go because it's the one pass compared to two or three. Exactly, yeah. So two or three passes, you've got time to, to push from the inside and fill the space and, and put inside pressure on the ball players. But in this situation here, as you can see, there's the threat. There's the threat. It's one pass threat versus only three defenders. And as I said before, how we handle this as coaches, um, get the, uh, the, the short side or the keep going side locked away and then lock the spaces through the front door there, the A, B and C defenders. If they want to try and play around us, good luck to them. And we all, always or we sometimes hear commentators or coaches talk about using the sideline as an extra defender. Yeah. In this play, how would you do that? Yeah, so how you would do it. So at, at times you're going to be left with three defenders. So what you need to do is you need to sort of paddle on the 45. So what rather than see a straight line there, what you want to do is you, you want to give, you know, give up a little bit of space. It's the one time where you don't really want to get off your line. So the A defender would, for instance, be in this position here, there, and then the B defender a little bit behind, the C defender a little bit more behind him, okay? And you try and defend it on the 45, and you just give up some metres, give up some metres, wait for your second marker to come. That's how you would shut it down. But in an ideal world, lock it away, four defenders versus the attacking threat there, lock your, um, lock your front door, which is the ABC defenders on the, uh, on the longer side, and good luck to them if they want to try and pass two or three passes long. So that's the only time as a coach you actually want to see your defenders yeah. moving back together rather than getting up. Yeah, yeah. So we, we talk about, you know, short size there. You just paddle and give up some time. So um, it's the only time where you don't want to get off the line because if they get up really hard and aggressive, automatically there's already four attackers versus three defenders. So you don't want to get off your line hard, you know, come up, come up, come up because they've got the overlap, OK? So they'll just go hands, 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 got the overlap. But if they paddle and buy some time for the second marker, that defender there to come and help, then that's the way you try and solve it. So 
Ideally, gold medal standard for defenders on the keep going side to lock it away, lock your spacings up ABC on the open side there. That's gold medal. Silver medal is, OK, we've only got three defenders, we've only got three defenders. Let's use our second marker and let's paddle on the, on the 45 and, uh, and allow the attack to play. You'll give up some metres, but then you can try and shut them down on the next play. OK, so teams will no doubt be affected by this in coming weeks. Doesn't always mean that a team with 13 against 12 is going to win. We saw a couple of weeks ago teams pulling off victories, unlikely victories, when they had 12 up against 13. How yeah. often do they do it? Well, I think it was New Zealand Warriors, which is the one that stands out to me a couple of weeks ago. I think they were down to 11 players at one stage there. So how do they do it? Look, they'll play from shorter field position. That's how they do it in attack. How they do it defensively, lock your keep going, lock your front door and have the fullback plug in the line more than uh, he would normally um, when, you're de when defending your trial line. OK, so if teams over the next couple of weeks or over the last month they're get, getting more used to being a player down so will we see teams be able to defend players better when they're down a man? I think you will because what teams will do is they'll practice that scenario at training so we often do opposed against the reserve grade at training and you do situations or scenarios so it's 13 v 13 you might create the scenario that you're down by two with five minutes to go or you're up by four with five minutes to go and you go and practice that well now what teams will do is they'll practice okay for five minutes we're going to defend and attack with 12 players against your reserve grade side and see how you do that this is what we need to do this is how we've got to prepare for the weekend because you know what if someone gets sent to the sim bin it's not an excuse to lose the game or it's not an excuse to let in tries so I think you'll see those scenarios be practiced at training all right well hopefully we see less and less sin bins moving forward yeah all hopefully right. we want to see 30 v 13 obviously yep Steve as always thanks so much for your analysis hopefully you're enjoying all these game plan segments at home and remember watch out for these trends when you're watching footy across the weekend in round 15.